You have to lift, rinse. Did you get the yellow, little yellow ones right here? And sift. That's what it takes to collect Dungeness crab larvae. We're looking for zoea. They look like little mosquitoes, but they're actually crab babies. Four times a week at the Mass Center Aquarium in Des Moines, researchers will pull light traps to collect samples, which will eventually... It can take up to five years to get to this size, so harvestable size. Look like this. So the largest migration in the entire world happens every single night in our waters. There's another little one that's yellow. Ariel Wahab is a researcher at the aquarium. She says the purpose is to fill in gaps in population data. Some of the fisheries uh, were declining, and so there wasn't enough dangerous crabs to support fisheries within that season. And so we are looking to see if we can actually predict harvest numbers four to five years in advance. The Mass Center Aquarium is one of 68 sites under the Pacific Northwest Crab Research Group conducting this study. Six years of data has already been collected. The traps are deployed across the Northwest, spanning from Toklan to the Canadian border. The highest number of Dungeness crab larvae is captured in the Central Salish Sea, while the lowest numbers are found in South Puget Sound. And there's a big need for this data. Parts of South Puget Sound have seen a 95% reduction in crab populations. With so little biological data, it leaves the population super vulnerable to like sudden unexpected changes in population levels due to like changing environmental conditions or access to habitat, um, which we've seen like in South Puget Sound, the population just crashed a few years ago and the fishery is still closed. The traps are made using a bucket with an LED light strip inside that turns on at night. It's clear so the animals can see the light and inside is a funnel that filters out larger animals. The trap mimics moonlight to attract the crab larva. Once a sample is collected, the Dungeness crab larva are counted, other species in the sample are identified, and everything is released back into the water. And then we've got our end stars here, so you can see kind of the size difference. The biological data is compiled and given to fishery managers. The traps are designed so that anyone can make one. All the parts are stuff you can buy at any hardware store. We use like the old water bottles. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty simple, easy to put together. Ali Galliotto with the Puget Sound Restoration Fund tells me the research is mainly volunteer-based. Anybody who's interested in becoming part of this network, collecting this type of data, seeing what's out in their local waters, can do that pretty easily. The hope is that more people will join the effort to track and monitor Dungeness crab. For Environment Northwest, I'm Savannah Welch.